Hello and welcome back to the channel. As you can see from the title above, today we're going to talk about what I eat in a day. Now this is going to be different to the recipe videos that I've shared before. It's going to be very, very casual, just taking you along while I eat from morning to night. Now I've kind of discussed my relationship with food before and I no longer have a concept of labelling food as being good or bad or follow a clean eating diet. In my philosophy, I enjoy things that give me joy, bring me joy, good for the soul, um, but in balance and moderate amount so if there's cake and I don't want to eat the cake I will eat the cake and my soul will thank me I'm just gonna show you what I eat in a day very very casual to the point and also making the most of what I have in the house and in the fridge and just kind of producing something from that if it's your first time on this channel then hello I'm Shu I make food lifestyle and future travel videos if you like what you're seeing then consider subscribing and if you're enjoying this video then please give this video a big thumbs up because it really helps to support the channel helps the algorithm and also helps to share this out with other like-minded food lovers as as well and I'll be really really grateful. Let's move on to the first thing, matcha latte. I really love tea, I really love coffee but my heart lies with matcha. On this day my sister made us all some matcha latte with some oat milk and it was really easy to put together and it was so delicious. It's actually far better than some of the matcha lattes I actually have on the high street and from coffee shops so props to my sister because it turned out really really well. But I always really love matcha because of its health benefits. I love that it gives me that caffeine boost. I just adore the taste of it. I love the taste of matcha anything. And then moving on to the actual breakfast which is porridge. I love the versatility of porridge and how creative if you can be with the toppings. With this one, just simply mix in 50 grams of oat with some oat milk, boil it up. I've added in some chopped dates as well and also a little bit of honey just to sweeten it up even more. And um, you can also opt for agave syrup as well if that suits you better. And the fun part is when you just kind of be a little bit more creative and adding whatever you want to create whatever flavour combination that you would love. So for this one, we've got some mixed seeds, some chia seeds, we've got some fruits in there as well. I love to add in some dates in there, blueberries, raspberries, bananas, always love bananas and almond butter. Possibilities are endless and you can really have fun with it and make it look really really pretty if you like as well. Sometimes when I'm in a bit more of a patient mood and in the mood to be delicate and artistic and creative then I'll try and make it look pretty. Other days I'll just chuck it on and then hope for the best. <laughs> Moving on to lunchtime, kimchi pancakes. This is a recipe that I got from my Korean kitchen. It's a fantastic blog full of recipes that I add absolutely love and adore. I'm going to post the recipe for the kimchi pancakes by my Korean kitchen in the description box below. But for the basic ingredients that you will need, it is all purpose flour, but I use plain flour which works just as well. Water, sea salt, one large egg whisked up, kimchi, some of the kimchi liquid. It does say for ice cubes, but I didn't use the ice cubes for this one. Chili peppers, some oil. Like I said, I'm going to link the full recipe, but just kind of going through very quickly what I did. I sift the flour and the salt together and then added the water and then kind of mixed it into a batter. Then you add in the egg and some of the kimchi and the kimchi liquid. Look at how good it looks mixed up. I mean, it actually looks really appetizing just from this. Is it just me? Like, I'm actually getting very excited just watching this back. After that, your batter is done. It's as simple as that. You heat up your pan, you put in a lot of oil and then just Pour it in, baby. You just put in the mixture into the pan. Make sure that it's like a thin layer of it so you're not kind of putting too much in the pan because it won't cook as quickly. And then once it looks like it's halfway done, you flip it and then cook the other side until it's all crispy and thin and gorgeous and golden and beautiful. I always like to go in with some scissors afterwards and then just like chopping it up to little pieces. You can also top this up with some sesame seeds and also some spring onion as well, like they do in the restaurants. Didn't have spring onion on that day, so I'm gonna imagine that it was there. The sesame sauce is super easy to put together and it was really delicious with the pancake as well. And all I have to do is combine some vinegar, some rice vinegar, soy sauce, water, and some brown sugar, or just raw sugar, whatever sugar you have. And um, you can also top it up with some sesame seeds, with some spring onion, with some minced garlic, and it is so good. And it's really, really good with the pancakes because it kind of absorbs all of that sauce as well. So when you're biting into it, you've got the vinegar and the soy sauce and a little bit of the sugar. 
<sighs> really, really tasty. Then it got to about 4 p.m. and there's a little bit of a snack break. On this particular day, I actually ordered from Clover <laughs> Patisserie from Chinatown. Always down to support my local Chinatown. And actually, they have a campaign going on on social media as well called hashtag bringing Chinatown home. This isn't a sponsored message. I just really wanted to share it because I'm all for sharing about the local communities there, the local businesses there, and I just hold Chinatown very dear to my heart. And if you click on the hashtag or go on the Chinatown London page, then I'll bring up a lot of different like user generated content of recipes, of things that you can do from home. I actually contributed and shared one of my Mad Pot Del Four um, vegan dishes over on the Instagram page as well. So if you're interested in looking and you don't follow me on Instagram already, then head on over and have a watch. On this particular day, just went crazy and got cake for everyone and for myself. It was more of an excuse to have it for myself, but just said it was for my sisters. So I could order some more. The ultimate favorite thing that I love from here was the matcha mille crepe. Mille crepe. I can't do a French accent. I tried and failed. But this is so delicious. The matcha flavor is strong. It's not too sweet either. And it's so good when you've got a hot cup of green tea or matcha tea or oolong tea or bubble tea, whatever you want. I also ordered the matcha gato as well, which was good but not as good as the other ones. And then also the Japanese souffle cheesecake, which was light, fluffy, milky, creamy, delicious. But my heart lies in the matcha meal crepe. One of these days I'm gonna work on my French accent and surprise you all. Next time I really wanna try the Earl Grey version because it looks and sounds amazing. So that was my 4 p.m. snack break cake. <laughs> Moving on to dinner time, we've got a Chinese classic dish, spare ribs in black bean sauce. Now, <laughs> I'm not very, very good, as you probably know already, at making things look beautiful and delicate and intricate. I am a big lover and a big fan of home cooking. I love home style cooking. Maybe it's the Cantonese upbringing of just, you know, having a dish, having it ready, whacking it on a plate and enjoying it with some rice and noodles. And these spare ribs don't score particularly well in the looks department, but it scores 10 out of 10 in the flavor department. It is so good, surprisingly easy to put together. This is a recipe that my parents have followed since childhood and I have always, always enjoyed it. It's one of my favourite dishes, so I thought I'd share that with you as well. Super easy to steam, put together all the ingredients. We've got some black beans in there, some garlic in there, salt, pepper, season it all up and then steam it for about 15 minutes, stirring halfway through and voila! That's a French word I can do. You have your sparrows and black bean sauce. So good, especially when you spoon over the sauce over steamed rice as well. Oof, really, really lovely with some greens, with some tomatoes and eggs, and so good. And an alternative thing as well, if you wanted to make it look a bit more fancy, you can also add it into actually rice when you're steaming it already in the rice cooker or a clay pot with some rice, and then also some Chinese sausage lap chang in it as well. And then you've got my favorite combination lap chang, pad got fan. So, so, so good. And when I'm in Hong Kong, I love to have this. Usually after dinner, I'll have some fruit some frozen yogurt if I can order it from Pinkberry or whatever is in the house. But on this particular day, I was so full up from dinner that I actually didn't go for dessert. This is my what I eat in a day. If you like this video and you would like to see more, then please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And also leave me some comments on what you would like to see food wise or lifestyle wise over the next few weeks. Hope you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon or evening and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.